If you want to make a perfect one, that'll take some refinement. This is probably not your video. It takes some practice, and there are tons of different methods out there all over the YouTubes. But if you want to make a quick and easy one, just crude, I can help you do that today. In case you're wondering, this is oak. Oak probably produces the best overall result from the different woods that I've tried with. These are made from tulip poplar. They're pretty large, uh, about two and seven eighths diameter, I think. And in order to get something this big, you're going to probably have to search on a pallet. That's where these came from. Bottom skid of a pallet. The idea here is in place of gymnastics rings, you use these to do pull-ups and such. This is only a slightly original process. It uses the lathe and uh, sander. The aim of this goofy looking jig is to be fast and easy, simple, and not perfect. You run a hole saw down through it. The benefit of using this jig, as opposed to something else, is that you can uh, cut right off the hump. That's what they call it in pottery and ceramics. It's called throwing off the hump where you have a mass of clay and you make a pot right off the top and then you leave some usable working material still on the wheel head. Similarly, we're just using a face plate on the lathe and you'll be able to cut one of these balls out of it and then another one out of it without even attaching with a center on the other side. So the advantage here is that you can run the hole saw the whole way until the sphere drops away and the only waste that you'll produce is what you need to screw into your block. So to get started, start with an octagon, you know, just 45 degree angles on the table saw. It gets it close and knocks these bumps away that'll catch. You don't have to smooth it out with a plane or anything beyond this. This is close enough. The hole saw that I'll be using is a three inch, which is large. Uh, it would be easier if you use anything smaller. If you've never used a face plate before, the circle is so that I can catch these. I almost unconditionally use a pilot hole when I'm drilling, or rather screwing into wood. Why I'm not why I'm not doing so here is because for one this is end grain that I'm screwing into, and reason number two is because I'm using poplar, which is uh, ext an extremely soft wood. Soft wood, two words, not soft wood, one word. It's a really simple jig. Before I get started, I'll say a couple things about it. This block here is for diagonal strength. The drill is pushing down on it, and as there's bumpiness, it wants to cause a deflection. So it's very, it's very important that the entire jig remains square. This is just a friction fit over the bar, but I clamp it here and here to get it nice and tight once I have it in place. This is... It's just additional surface area to give the hole saw more bite as you move through. Once you get through the, to the bottom, when you're about ready to break through, there's not much of the hole saw that's still touching the side of this piece of plywood. This smaller hole is just a viewing hole the, for the placement of the jig. We want the edge of the guide hole to be tangent to the edge of the block. Remember that your hole saw still takes an eighth of an inch of material away. So it's kind of like the, as close to the pin as you can get without going over. This will help stop the vibration from loosening up the handle.
I did a pretty lousy job of centering it on the faceplate, so try to do a better job. I should have been more careful. Take note that there isn't very much clearance right there, right now. But later, as it starts to approximate a sphere, there will be room to fit this in so that we can get our additional surface area down here. It makes a really cool design that we can sand out later, but this one is ruined. See the flat spots? That's because I didn't center the material carefully, because I was just doing this for a demonstration. It's split anyway, but nevertheless, the procedure is the same, and if I wanted to, I could still salvage this by using the next smaller hole saw, but I would have to change this top plate. That's part of the concept of this design was that these could have replaceable plates, uh, but it would have to be lowered. It's going to take some head scratching, as with everything, though. I'm not giving up on it yet, just because I'll show you how the process ends. There's still one more cool thing I want to show you, and I'll show you how you can just drop this away. So let's pretend as though it's not ruined. It's not entirely ruined, out, ruined after all. Uh, another learning experience. It's an egg. What? Why did the flat spots go away? Because this hole is starting to wear out and I have been pressing in that direction to keep it. This is a prototype. Okay, so just relax. This is not professional woodworking. This is just an ideas video. This, I never cut a new plate here from the original hole, which I used a bent hole saw, which had an, it was eccentric, so it made an oval type of hole. So this hole is not perfectly circular. And as such, since I've been pressing in this direction, it skewed the hole saw a little bit and caused this to make somewhat of an egg shape. It's only out a little bit, but it doesn't matter. This is, a, this is good for a proof of concept. So uh, let's finish up with the sanding.
and there you have it. Uh, if you do it, these ones turned out to be perfect. They just needed to be sanded better. But if you do this, you, you know, make sure that top hole is nice and neat. Don't let it go bad or you'll, you'll, you'll end up with an egg like this. And the egg didn't sand as well on the sander because you could see it bouncing around everywhere. But something to play with. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I, I don't expect you to, but say la vie. See you on the next subject. No, this is not the procedure that I used to make this. There are a million different ways to do this. It, I was just trying to give you an idea. See you later.